Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you've seen the hype over at Ubiquity over the last few days, you will know that the uh, Unify Cloud Gateway Ultra has been released. And so thanks to Ubiquity for sending this over. Uh, let's take a look at what we get in the box. So I do like that they're moving to uh, a packaging that seems to be much more eco-friendly. We don't have a lot of extras. They're probably still fine-tuning that. So take that off. Box opens like this so we don't have that outer shell. And then inside the box is the gateway itself, which we'll take a look at here. Uh, separator, probably a link to the quick start guide, some documentation there, power adapter, ethernet cable, which is one of the flex boot ethernet cables, and then in the bottom of this are the feet, I don't know if you can see that or not, but little feet on that, so they're... Uh, you cannot, that's it, that's that's all that's in the box. So you cannot, or at least at this point, Ubiquity does not have a wall mount for this. That's why they send the feet. So let's take a look at the unit itself, and then we'll hop into the specs. All right, so what I've got here is I've got one of the expresses uh, next to it, so you can see, and you can see it's got the same size uh, LED screen, LCD screen there on the front, whatever they're calling those LCMs. It's also approximately the same thickness as the Express, but we're going to see that it's got some key uh, hardware differences. So there's the bottom of it, smooth. Right now, like I said, it doesn't, doesn't come with a wall mounting option. doesn't mean that they're not going to have it in the future. Then on the back, we've got our, our power. We've got a WAN port that is 2.5 gig, and then you've got four one gigabits, and you've got a reset button over there. So uh, this is all four of these ports back here do share uh, one gig. So uh, for those of you who might be already in the comments saying, well, you can't do 2.5 gig, this will do one gig with IDS IPS. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the specs on this real quick and then, uh, we'll get it fired up and we will, we will set it up. All right. So here we are over at the spec guide and you can see it's got a quad core, quad core processor at 1.5 gigahertz, which is faster than the express cpu it's also got three gigs of ddr4 16 gigs of onboard storage can be managed with bluetooth or ethernet it does have the four one gig ports and the one one slash 2.5 gig port ids ips throughput is one gig power method is usb type c um does not have let's talk about that this does not have an access point built in. So what does it have? It has your Ethernet ports and it has the controller, right? So this does run Unify Network Application. It is standalone. And according to Ubiquity, we want to manage about 30 devices and about 300 clients. It's about the top end of this. And it comes in at, a, like at an amazing $129 dollars. The other thing to know is it cannot run Protect, it cannot run Talk, it cannot run Access, it runs Network Application only. So you could use an Express as an access point and pair it with this. Then you've got these two devices that look very similar, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, but $129 USD for this. Um, I, I don't know, if you're just getting into the ecosystem, this definitely, definitely is worth some consideration. So let me get everything plugged in, and we'll be right back, and we'll do we'll do setup. All right, so I have my WAN and LAN plugged in, and I'm going to 
plug in the power and we'll see if this thing boots up for us. There it goes. LCM comes alive. So it is going to boot up. And as soon as we are booted, we will get this setup complete. All right. So the Cloud Gateway Ultra is booted. And you can see that we're on a we're on a setup screen there on the LCM. <clears throat> and it automatically opened this window that you're seeing here. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and name this. It's always good to name your device as something meaningful. I have access to hundreds of people's devices, and a lot of them are just named default. You know, we got, <laughs> we got to change that at some point. So I'm going to name this WH Lab UCG Ultra. Now, it wants me to go ahead and sign in with a UI account so I can manage this. And I, I'm a fan of this because it enables multi-factor authentication, which, by the way, is going to be mandatory for Ubiquity accounts here in the very near future. But what I'm going to do, you could proceed without a UI account, then you have to just manage it locally. You can't invite people easily to work on your devices. So I bind it to the cloud, especially so I can get that MFA. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged into my UI account. The next thing it'll want to do is it'll want to restore from a backup. We're going to skip that. So I'm going to get signed in and we'll be right back. All right, so we got past that. You can see we are now doing upload and download tests. And uh, so I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. All right, once you get past the speed test, which you can skip, uh, then it says setting up our Unify OS. It's going to configure the console. It says it has about a minute left. In theory, this is going to be on, you know, the newest firmware. On the LCM there, we've got a little setup complete uh, sorry, the camera didn't want to focus there. Now, we can go to the dashboard or we can manage from unify.ui.com. Let's just head on over to the dashboard. Okay, and so what it's doing right now, is you can see that it's updating. And Unify Ubiquity has made some changes so that we, on some of these new installations, we get the latest version of the, of the firmware. And so... I'm going to let this thing update. Once it's fully updated, we'll come back and take a look. All right, so that update did take, um, it took about five minutes. And you can see we're up to date on the network version, which is 8.0.28 is what they're showing as the, the latest here. And then the actual Unify OS is 3.2. Dot 12. So let's take a look here, what we've got going on. We can. All right, so we've got the same console that we're used to. This nice picture of the device here. Right now you can see how much activity we have. We can go ahead and run a speed test. And um, so I have... Uh, gigabit internet that's subjective right so but this is also uh, double natted and so 615 down 50 megs up we'll turn on IDS IPS and I don't suspect that that will will change too much so everything that it's got here you're used to uh, you're used to seeing and what I do like is that these devices do take the time to actually update. Let me refresh this just to make sure there's not another update. Doesn't look like it. So we're, we're good there. Um, so we don't have any access points, but we can pre-configure. And when we plug an APN, you know, it will go ahead and adopt it and push those settings to it. We've got our default network, which also depending on if you plug this device in, and you've got a 192.168 network, and you plug the WAN in, it's going to recognize that, and it's going to configure something else for the LAN, which is really nice. A lot of the vendors have moved to that, and it's absolutely fantastic. So here we've got our, 
our internet. And you can see right now we're on port five. Now we can add a secondary WAN to this. So we can make port four WAN two. And then you can also have the Unify LTE backup on here. So you can actually have three, total of three WAN connections on this device. We can do automatic speed test. We get all of the VPN options that we get in all of the other, all of the other consoles. So we can even do site magic with, with this. All right. So that's fantastic. This thing is a full featured gateway. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on some country restrictions and we are going to select China and Russia. And we're going to turn suspicious activity, notify, and block. We're going to turn it on high. And we're going to go ahead and apply those changes. So now IDS, IPS, which is what suspicious activity is, is on full. Um, so as soon as that um, finishes configuring the gateway, we'll run another speed test. Here's our routing. Um, so this is the latest general release, that 8.0.28. All right, let's see. doesn't look like this thing is still configuring. So let's go ahead and run our speed test now. And you saw what it was at. It was at 6.15 before with the IDS IPS disabled. Got much higher upload speeds for some reason. We'll run a couple of these because at peak demand, I've seen our internet go down to like 300 megs. So we'll, we'll test again. And we'll adjust the speed to the, uh, the expected speed. The problem is the internet that I'm on is, is shared, right? It's cable. So it's not dedicated out to my provider. So we could be seeing some issues from from peak times. And we'll go ahead and run our speed test again. And we're over we're over six hundred. So I'm gonna say that uh, my ISP also uh, is probably experiencing some some peak times. But let me go ahead and turn off IDS IPS, and we'll run that test again. Uh, we'll we'll turn it off. We'll turn off the uh, country restrictions, and we'll turn off suspicious activity. Wait for this to get ready. Looks like we're ready. We'll go back. We'll run another speed test. See what we get now. See, so even with IDS, IPS turned off, we're in that same neighborhood. So we'll see what, what happens. So we're in this, that, that same neighborhood. I'll run another one real quick without it. But we'll see exactly what happens. I have to see if I can find a time when I can get most of my my gig down. So that's kind of where it's at. But I think that this device, I think that uh, I, I think it's priced right. I think that it can get a lot of people into the ecosystem, and I think that this is going to be definitely a mainstay in the lab here and with our configuration videos. If you've got any questions about this, uh, let me know. I'm going to do, I'll do a comparison video um, against the Express and the UDR and all that. And maybe uh, we'll run some side-by-side -side speed tests, but let me know. Um, let me know what you think about this. I think it's fantastic. I'll put an affiliate link down in the comments if you want to pick one up. 
Um, yeah, let me know where you're going. The price is very interesting. 129 bucks for this. Uh, I mean, if you don't need edge router features, you know, this is a perfect edge router X. Um, and we know that dynamic routing is coming. So what else are you going to use your, your red, your edge router for? Maybe, um, high availability or something like that. But if you're running an edge router Rex, edge router X, this might be the perfect replacement. So let me know what you think about this down in the comments. And if you like these devices and this content, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with an affiliate link, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, you need your network tuned up, whether it's wired or wireless, the security, storage, voice over IP, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.